and thank you for joining us. This is Faith Dialogues and we are very grateful that you could join us. My name is Liz Kanye and I'll be your host. I'm joined in studio by two amazing people. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves and then we're going to get to hear their faith journey and what God has helped them to accomplish this far. So, Karibuni Sana. Santi. <laughs> Thank you. Please introduce yourselves, starting with a lady. Uh, okay. My name is Connie Oko, and I. Yes. <laughs> this is my husband. Uh, my name is uh, Robert Oko. I'm uh, Connie's husband, <laughs> and uh, I love the Lord. We love the Lord. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. What do you do? Where do you live? Okay, I'm Oko. Cool. Okay. So I am a worship leader at our church in Switzerland and it's uh, called Church of the Living Saviour. It's in the centre of Geneva. I also work uh, in an international organisation in Geneva. So, and I raise children, three children, <laughs> our three children. Yes, <laughs> thank you. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, my name is Robert Uko. I'm an international civil servant uh, with an international organization in Geneva, Switzerland, and I pastor a church of the, that uh, we are together with my wife at Church of the Living Savior in Geneva. Okay. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here, and viewers, as you've heard, they are the Okos, so which tells you they are Kenyan. Tell us, <laughs> how did you get to be in Geneva? We go first. Okay. Uh, being in Geneva was um, a, a faith journey for both of us. And um, first we had uh, this opportunity, we were just newly married. And uh, this opportunity to, to take our time to you know, visit the place, get to know the place, came up. And uh, actually it was presented to my wife. And uh, she said, you know, we discussed it and, you know, prayed about it and we said, you know, um, we are located here and uh, we want to take some time to know if actually God would want us to get out and, you know, change location. Mm -hmm. So after prayer, full consultation and, uh, you know, just uh, spending time with the Lord on it, we got an okay. And, uh, Actually, we were just newly married, and then what happened was we said, okay, fine, let's take the faith step and uh, uh, move over to uh, that new country. Um, then uh, we actually just gave away all, you know, basically all the gifts that we were given during our wedding. <laughs> and we said, fine, God, we we don't know what lies ahead. The only thing that we know is you. Mm -hmm. And this uh, was our faith journey that started, you know, uh, uh, seven years uh, of courtship. And then, you know, now after our marriage, this was the next faith step that we had uh, waiting ahead of us. So we actually just gave away all our furniture. The only thing that we had left with us were, was clothes. And then we said, okay, look, God, You've given us the go ahead to, you know, make the step to move to the, a new country. Uh, Connie's sister and her husband were actually there. Okay. okay. So we said, if we're going to go, we're going to go in faith and we're going to go in the world. Because many at times we've had um, uh, stories of people who get to the diaspora and then, um, you know, staying there becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. But we said, God, look, if you've given us the go-ahead, mm -hmm. we're going to take the right step and move with you. Okay. And uh, then we're going to trust that you're going to open the ways ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, I don't want to hog this <laughs> faith testimony. I'll give it to Connie to continue from there. <laughs> okay, so he has spoken about the logical facts and I have the details. <laughs> okay, please go ahead. <laughs> No, thanks, Robert. That was good. So um, there was a word of prophecy in um, this from this church by uh, Oscar. He, he, no, Pastor Arnold prophesied in tongues, mm -hmm. and Oscar translated. Wow, mm -hmm. the tongues, interpreted the tongues, mm -hmm. 
And the word was, you're going to relocate to a country that speaks French. Oh. Yeah? Well, I couldn't remember that. <laughs> yes. Wow. Years ago. Like, I think a year and a half before, my sister called us to try and relocate. Okay. And that was it. Oh. Also, there was a similar word from somebody else who used to be in this church and who has, he said that, he said in Luo, and he's not a Luo. He said, he sent an SMS to us during our... Yeah, during the time when we were actually deliberating and you know, yeah. uh, you know. And he had no idea of what was going on. Yeah. And he said, in Luo, Kami Luo Korie o Kituoe, where you shower is not where you dry yourself. You see, back, you I guess he was talking about a village setting yeah. where you go out to dry uh, in the sun. Mm -hmm. So where you have taken a shower is not where you dry. dry. You're relocating. We looked at it and we knew with prophetic insight, this is co corroborating what God is saying. So we were, we threw ourselves in the hands of God and said, over to you. And the opportunity came and shoo. Nice. So what you're saying is, both of you, did you ever have dreams of relocating when you were young? Was it a dream before you got married? Or was this something that only the Lord knew? Uh, I don't think we had the idea of relocating no. because for us, especially as a couple, what we wanted to do was to be faithful in God's service mm -hmm. and to just invest ourselves in the, the kingdom of God. because we have our uh, assurance that everything that is going to come after when we invest ourselves in the kingdom <laughs> would be to prosper us. And it's God who knows the alls. As we just know, we start with him and then we work the way through with him. So we had no plans of, you know, like uh, going outside the country and whatnot. Okay. So the other thing I'm getting that this happened after you got married, shortly after you got married. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you think for some people there are doors open when they get married? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain doors and keys tied to yeah. the person you meet in life mm -hmm. to walk the journey with. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, even marriage needs to be a faith journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Please speak a little bit into that. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we need to know, especially as uh, Christians, is that everything that involves the Christian life is founded on faith. Mm -hmm. when, whether you talk about you know, uh, finances, whether you talk about education, whether you talk about marriage, or whatever project you're going to engage in, mm -hmm. faith is going to be the foundation. So with that knowledge, the marriage is going to be sound and it's going to advance according to how God wants it mm -hmm. when we found it on faith. Be and actually faith is just a door into an adventure with God. And I think all of us need to walk through that door. <laughs> That's true. Amazing. So do you think the moving away from Kenya into a foreign land, mm -hmm. do you think that um, solidified your union? I see a lot of things in, uh, when I think about my, the first few years of marriage, mm -hmm. we had two years, we were married for a year or a few months before we left, I don't know. Uh, close to a year, because I remember that our first anniversary, which is a story which, which we can relate later, we were not even together, but we'll explain that. <laughs> because we, Robert had come, our visas had ended. Uh, we, were coming, we are coming into that. Yeah, we are coming Probably into that. Probably the story will be asked about. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all I can say is that when we landed in Switzerland, there's no. The, in the setting that we found ourselves in, there was no uh, house help, there was no one else doing stuff for you. So, there's no. You're doing things together. And when the children come, then you, when, uh, let's say, Robert comes from work 
I come from work. We both, we enter the house through one door. One goes into the bathroom, the child, one goes into the kitchen to sort out her So Basically, we are in the house throughout, working out the marriage together. So in a way, I want to believe that it did. Mm. And yes. I think also, maybe if I could say something, um, uh, and for me this is also just, you know, equal, as equally important as what my wife Connie has said. Our ma marriage is important that marriage is solidified wherever God finds it. Mm -hmm. And for us, and I still say it, uh, tomorrow is going to be our 22nd year marriage anniversary. Mm -hmm. But Tomorrow? Yes, okay. exactly, 22nd. Um, for me, I think that right from the beginning of the marriage and through the years, I still consider her as my girlfriend. So, irrespective of where you change, where, wherever you change the location, she still remains uh, my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I just think about it, I say, okay, uh, this is my girlfriend. Then I remember when I see the kids and I say, okay, yeah, we are married, we are parents. <laughs> so for us, changing location just took our friendship from one location and put it in another. Okay, that's true. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> By the way, from us at Faith Dialogues, we wish you a happy anniversary. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So now let's go back to diaspora living. Yes. How was it for you? Mm. Fix this mm. for you. Something small. Thanks. How was it for you? How was the transition? Did you experience any culture shocks? How did you deal with them? You want to go ahead? Uh, yes. Ah, I must say I had a, a good foundation of the language because in Switzerland they speak French, mm -hmm. Italian, German, and um, French, another language, and then uh, Romanish. That's it. Yeah. And uh, without one of those, English is taught in schools, and at that time. 20 years ago, actually, it wasn't so much, you know. So you needed to have your French basics, right? And what had happened to me, and actually my siblings, uh, my mom had forced us into French-speaking classes. Uh -huh. So at that time, when it came to subject choices, she said, you are going to do French. So I, be I, be I believe that God led her. Mm -hmm. So the culture shock, the number one shock would have been the language, but then we had a good basis. And then um, the usual food, different food stuff, you have to get used to, <laughs> yes, you have to get used to. There's no gali. There's no gali, <laughs> really, there's absolutely, you have to, look for it or carry it or do something to get it there. Mm. And then there's also, um, there's a lot, huh? there's plenty. <laughs> and the fact that uh, general he, he, social life, <laughs> I think there's a lot, I'm trying to keep a lot in to be able to let it out one time <laughs> when we have more time. Okay, okay. What about the faith aspect? I hear, they, they tell us that in Africa we are very religious and spiritual, but when you go out there, it's a bit harder. Did you experience that? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think that was um, one of the culture shocks, I think. Um, if, if, absolutely. If there's any culture shock to mention. Yeah, absolutely. I find that uh, it's easy to find people who readily who want to love and serve the Lord. Easy, it's easier in Africa than in other parts, but that, that does not mean that there are people who equally don't want to serve God, but it's just the dynamics are very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, that was something, we, we shouldn't take for granted the much we are taught here mm -mm. and the much 
grounding work that is done absolutely in in in, in the body of Christ mm-hmm. um i mean we have certain parts of um, of of the body of Christ in Europe where there's revival going on but let's not take for granted you know sometimes when you have a lot of um God's word which is spiritual food available yeah. sometimes you just you become too choosy mm-hmm. and mm. you ignore the essentials uh, of what you need so i find that in 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 africa the danger of 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 christianity is that people can take things for granted you can take faith for granted because you have a wide selection mm-hmm. but once you leave this place if you're not grounded out there mm-hmm. you will just lose your faith okay. because then your faith is not a communal responsibility it becomes a personal responsibility mm-hmm. so if you don't have the impetus and the drive to love the lord on your own by yourself and want to serve him and give him your all then you'll find yourself in trouble wow. yeah okay mm-hmm. okay yeah. thank you for sharing that goni you want to add yes in fact um we have this n- that we, we 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 share many times at home we say um here we can tell someone in Kenya here and in Africa in the general african setting we can say um the lord will bless you the lord will give you a plus, he'll give you shelter come to jesus don't don't stay out there god will bless you he will actually change your your life completely and enlarge your territory and really In Switzerland the person has the territory has the cash has the house has everything they need that you can see but what they don't some not all because there's a huge a, a big number of people who serve God and love him deeply that you, there are pockets of places where you find people who literally pray through the night for revival in Switzerland wow. mm-hmm. yes There's groups of intercessors in Bern. There's if you ask you find crazy things. Mm-hmm. People who worship, people who pray, people who know they've done the mapping of the place for intercession. Anyway, back to the point that um then there is this person who has everything that you can see but needs yes, in a yes, healing yes. Mm-hmm. and they need just somebody to speak a word. That's why we when i would encourage people already at this time at this point if the lord sends you out load yourself be um desire the gifts of the spirit prophecy word of knowledge so that that person who seemingly has the palace yeah. you can reach them yeah. with the word of knowledge yeah. it calms everything down yeah. wow yeah. thank you thank you it's good to know mm-hmm. so let's talk about parenting You, by the time you were relocating <laughs> you did not have any children no so tell us about how it was raising kids in a different environment uh, i think <laughs> having kids in uh, in a different mm-hmm. environment um, i mean what we've learned actually through the years from the beginning and through the years is number one, <laughs> there are positives in uh african you know type of upbringing yeah. that we need to hold precious mm-hmm. and hold on to even mm-hmm. when living in the diaspora mm-hmm. um things like you know raising children as a community becomes important because where you are going into especially like now where we found ourselves mm-hmm. you find that raising children is only the responsibility of the parents yeah. so the other parts of the community are disengaged from getting involved in you know issues like to deal with discipline and what not whereas in Africa you find that there's a setting where they say that the co- the child is brought up by the community yes so and then there are certain values that we have from where we come from mm-hmm. which when we put ourselves we find ourselves in a new environment we put ourselves in a position where we find Uh, ourselves swimming against the current yeah. and i've mentioned this story before my son at age 6 came back home one day and said look uh, we had a you know counselor come to our school and this counselor said that daddy and mommy if you beat us we need to call the police 
mm-hmm. and I was, you know, I mean, we, we were taken aback by, you know, a six-year-old coming up to yeah. tell you that. And it's because in the, where we found ourselves or where we find ourselves even today is that we live in a society where corporal punishment is looked at as, you know, uh, not, not corporal punishment. They, they call they call that corporal punishment. <laughs> so it makes it look like some kind of abuse. Yeah. But without really knowing that in our context from where we come from, we engage with children, we communicate to them with words, and then when necessary, we introduce the pain element, still maintaining it as a message towards molding in, molding them in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So that becomes a very big clash where you cannot even punish your child in public, in a supermarket and whatnot, because it would be, you know, you'd be taken, you know, uh, I mean, some actions can be taken against you. Mm-hmm. So my son came, when he said that, we discussed and I told my son, okay, we know, um, that's what you've been told in school, so now what we're going to do is, starting today, in that time we had two children, so the elder one is the one who came with the new wisdom. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fresh from school. <laughs> Fresh from school. Mm-hmm. So we told him, okay, starting today, we're going to have your younger brother only. For you, you will be the child of the police. Mm-hmm. Starting today, in fact, I want you to get out of the door and never come back. Here's your suitcase. Here's your suitcase. We, we, we packed for him. Yeah, we packed for him. We told him, go to the police. They will and live there. <laughs> They will be your father, your mother. Yeah. Yeah, they will take you to school. Yeah. 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 Go. The African parents remain. They yes. Are, even in yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. Yes. You, you have, have to. to. Mm-hmm. You have to. You have to. So then, <laughs> you know, my son said, okay, daddy, sorry, I won't I'm say sorry. that. <laughs> and we have never heard of that thing anymore. Anymore. Even the second one, was, <laughs> he was right there. And he saw what happened and he never opened his mouth. When that counselor walked into their class, at his age. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Amazing. We find yeah. ourselves in a place where even uh, the basic parenting is something, I mean, some, some certain aspects, especially that deal with character formation, mm-hmm. you are not allowed to, you know, um, explore and find for yourself the best way to do it. And when the pain element is involved, the law comes in. And we find that, you know, something that uh, we really need to stamp our authority yeah. in the home and say, look, we love you, but sometimes you push us to a place where yeah. the pain element has to come in. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't care for you. Mm-hmm. We are the ones who wish you the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in Africa, mm-hmm. like you said, mm-hmm. a child is raised by the whole community. Mm-hmm. Have you been in a community where you have seen a child misbehaving and you want to pinch and you can't? Has it occurred in Switzerland? <laughs> What? You have a story. Uh, maybe go, go, go ahead. Just mention your case, then I will. You know, we have such... The other thing about relo- One thing about relocating is... Uh, please, don't leave the Kenyan-African aspect of you. Move with it. Mm-hmm. Come settle down, do the merry-go-rounds. Have the wamamas meet. Wababa wakumkutane Friday apo wakifongea. You know those things. Let's yeah. engage mm-hmm. and have a WhatsApp. Now we have the, the 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 privilege of having WhatsApp groups. You know mm-hmm. where people can engage. So in w- one time, um, you know you cannot separate your child from his class and his school and mm-hmm. his friends a group of friends that they have. And those are their friends, those are their classmates. Mm-hmm. So one time, this gentleman walks, is walking through the, some corridor, <laughs> going to his house, and finds one of his neighbor's children, and then looks closely and says, ah, this is Robert's son. And this is a Kenyan friend of ours, in our community, in our WhatsApp co- group. And, it, and, you know. and we share a lot, huh? The Nyamachoma times, the fun times, the raising funds for X, Y, Z. Yeah, we are there. So this man took it upon himself to call our son. He was 16 then. 
because this group of people he saw, one of them is a neighbor's child, he didn't like them. They have, they, they're not good, they're not, their behaviors are not correct, but this is Robert's son. Little did he know that these are, these are classmates and you cannot completely, you know, pluck your child. That's the other thing we do. Mm. You don't pluck your child from their setting. You let him, you teach him at home very early. Mm. So when they go out there, they are the difference. Yeah. He can be in a place where, which is full of, you know, all manner of things are being done. But he will not touch it, you know, because he knows what is required of him. It's already in there. So this man brought the boy home. Not to mention that the man himself was, you know. <laughs> not <laughs> we, we looked and said, hey, God drove that cow. Mm. Anyway, so they came home and we appreciated it. Shook his hand and said, thank you very much. People look out. I mean, this boy is 16. We 16 year old. Can you actually tell Ingia up at one day? You know, that kind of, so we have that rapport. We still keep that communal. And we, yeah. Yeah, so we appreciate it. And so we, we other people also appreciate when we tell off bad behavior. We say, I mean, where is, a, a girl walks in and we ask, where's the rest of your dress? You know, live. Mm. Go home and cry. I mean, deal with it. Because the man is so close to us. We have this rapport. But you cannot do that to everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. Friendships, you can break friendships and do certain things, but that's that. <laughs> okay. Robert, you have any story? Um, it's I boiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think f for me also, um, uh, one thing about moving from your setting to a different setting is that you also have to study mm -hmm. the culture of the place that you go to. Yeah. And then uh, we, we also understand that in Europe, we, this, what we do for the African community and the children there mm -hmm. in terms of discipline yeah. would not do the same for our mm -hmm. kids who, our kids' friends who are European. Mm -hmm. Because their, their way of discipline is completely different. And sometimes you can't really uh, vouch for the kind of discipline from where they come from by the kind of people they are, or by how they want to be. Because in Europe you find that at 16, a child is independent, they, even, they can even be pushed out of the house to start their own life. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for us, at 16, the child is still with, within our care, yeah. maybe going to college or high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's different strokes for different folks, I can say. Mm -hmm. Yes, very yeah. true, that aspect. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, what are some of the challenges you faced when you moved, even after living there for some time? Are there challenges that you're still facing and overcoming? You can share with our audience, especially those who would like to move to Switzerland. Mm 